Hello and welcome back to the AI Driven Marketer. My name is Dan Sanchez. My friends call me Danchez. And today we're talking about Search GPT. Yes, that is the new search engine being released by ChatGPT very soon. It's in beta right now for a limited amount of users. And I imagine it'll be coming to us soon, at least within the next few months. It seems like everything the big AI companies put out there is always like, look at this, but you won't have access to it for a little while. I made an episode about that a few weeks ago because that's... It's kind of what's happening. They 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 like the PR splash of pushing out things, but on this particular one, I wanted to do a whole episode because the cool thing about Search GPT is that Search it's it's kind of already available in Chat GPT, and a lot of people don't realize it. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what's actually already there and what's coming down and how how it's different than what we currently have available with search in chat gpt so first let's talk about what's already there yes search <laughs> you've been able to search from within chat gpt for at least a year now probably a little over a year and it is through not its own search engine but bing you've been able to access bing through the search results and it actually pr makes your results much much better. In fact, a few weeks ago, a friend notified me that his search results that he was getting back from ChatGPT were just so good, or not the search results, but just his answer to a question. And what I found is ChatGPT has been sneakily like including search results in your chat after your after your prompts more and more often without you even having to ask for it which is why chat gpt has actually gotten better at producing good results for you um, and i could show you the difference of what your your conversation with chat GPT looks like with search and without search um luckily it doesn't do it all the time, so I can provide an example of what it looks like without it doing the search. But if you ask it to, it will do the search. So I'm going to open up my desktop here. And if you're watching on video, you'll be able to follow along. But if you're just listening, then you should be just as good otherwise, because I'll be explaining as I walk through these prompts and what I'm getting back as results. But if you want to watch, you can watch on Apple Podcasts. Just open up the full full window to see the video. You can watch on YouTube or AI Driven Marketer. Um, but like I said, let's jump in and you'll still be able to follow along pretty well, even if you're just listening. So here I have ChatGPT 4.0 open, and I it's just clean. It's not a custom GPT. It's just vanilla ChatGPT 4.0. And I ask it the question, what are the best podcasts for B2B marketers, right? And this is a similar search that I, I asked like way back in December of 2022 when ChatGPT was first out. And this is honestly a very similar list that I got back then. I don't remember exactly what I asked then, but it was pretty similar to this. I'm sure if I go back through my search history, I can find it. But here we have... Here is it's this is the results I get. And I can tell it didn't search because what it what I did do when I asked to search was a different result. So here's what it gave me without it going to Bing to search. It gave me B2B growth and it gives a description. The uh, for each one it gives a description. It says the marketing book podcast, the marketing over coffee, the CMO podcast, the marketing smarts podcast, Saster podcast, B2B marketing leaders podcast, B2B revenue leadership, flip my funnel, and the intelligent inbound podcast top 10 i'm going to give a little description of each as a number ordered here and it's great i used to be it used to be a host for b2b growth and i know that even when i searched back in 2022 it gave me a very similar list and i was excited back then because i was a host of that show at that time for sweetfish media exciting um a lot of similar podcasts that i see in search results a lot if you just go and search on apple podcast for b2b marketing a lot of these podcasts will pop up because they're keyword heavy hence we have b2b marketing leaders Let's see, marketing book podcast, pretty popular. B2B revenue leadership. Um, still, we have some that aren't keyword heavy. Let flip my funnel, which is a podcast we worked on at Sweetfish and the podcasts. But still, like these come up in B2B marketing conversations somewhat regularly. Now, let me show you what it looked like when I added a slight tweak to the prompt. I'm going to switch tabs here and I'm going to go to a fresh, fresh chat window. And I just changed the prompt just slightly i said can you do a search on bing to find the best podcast to listen to for b2b marketers same prompt just i asked it to do a search on bing and the results it got back were actually much better fortunately b2b growth did not show up on this list but that might be telling for b2b growth over the last couple of years even though it's still a very influential podcast we have a different set we have confessions of a b2b marketer b2b marketing exchange breaking b2b exit five b2b marketing with dave gearhart Revenue Vitals, B2B Playbook, The Growth Podcast, Create Like the Greats, Gary V Audio Experience, and The Founder Podcast. If you're in B2B marketing, you're probably looking at some of these podcasts. You're like, uh -huh. yeah, look, there's Chris Walker's podcast and there's 
Dave Gearhart. <laughs> like those are two of the most influential people in B2B marketing right now and have been for the last couple of years. And the difference is it went and searched for six, uh, use Bing to search and it has a little indicated right here at the top of its response, search six sites and you can actually click it. It's a drop down. It gives you all six of the sites whose information it used to create the list. And what I think is these are probably top ranking. In fact, we can just open up Bing right now. Oh, not bring, Bing, right? And go B2B marketing podcast. And let's see what it actually found, right? Did we get the same list? I'm looking at, I'm trying to see which ones are ads here. <laughs> Let's see, B2B marketing guide, Unleash Possible. Nope. It actually is skipping over specific results and just going to the aggregator results. Here's Cognizum. Here's Foundation. And it's actually using Bing's. I'm seeing some of the same ones, but I'm also seeing, there's the CMO. Here's Apple Podcast, B2B marketing podcast and Apple Podcast. It did not source this. It's just pulling the aggregator post. So it's pulling listicles. It didn't go to Yelp. It didn't go to a lot of different places here. It's really just pulling from the listicle results in order to create this list that we're looking at. So listicles are going to be big. I mean, they have been big in the SEO world for a long time, but in AI search, it's just going to get bigger. We'll talk about that in a minute in in how this is going to impact search engine optimization. But even if you look at these results, each one of these has the same numbered list, you know, with the name of the podcast and a description of it, but it also has a new thing. It has the, it has the reference for where it pulled the information. Now, I think it's not quite, I don't know why it's pulling, it's pulling references to say like, this is where I found this specific podcast, but you got to remember it searched through six sites and probably pulled like how often are these being mentioned across these six aggregate sites that we found. And that's what it's using to determine top right? Because that's kind of subjective top by what? It doesn't have access to the download information of the show. Otherwise, it would probably just pull that list. So it's using how often it's being mentioned on aggregate sites in order to rank these podcasts. And I actually find that it did a pretty dang good job because it's actually pulling ones that I know for a fact are influential like Exit 5 and Revenue Vitals from Chris Walker. And But this is a preview of what's to come in search. So this is already available on ChatGPT and it's even, it's like I said before, it's doing this more and more often without you even having to ask to do a search on Bing. That's what my friend did a search for companies that service Cisco. Like how the heck would ChatGPT know which companies service Cisco? But if it goes to Bing to find the information, its results are going to be much better. A friend told me about how accurate the search results were. And then I went and broke apart his search, his AI conversation. I'm like, oh, it's doing searching without him even asking for it, which is why the results are getting better. Because if you have to pull from ChatGPT's long-term memory, at least that's what I call it, then the results can be kind of fuzzy, kind of like this last list we got before. It's doing it based on a like a long, you think about long-term memory, it can be fuzzy even for ourselves, right? We've seen these things before. For. So we're just recalling them kind of loosely from the back of our brain. That's exactly what AI is doing to pull together this last list. But uh, what's always better is if we can go and do a fresh search for information, then recall them and analyze them, it's going to do a much better job. So humans do the same thing. AI, when it does it, does gets better results just like humans do. So that's why it's exciting to see search incorporated more and more into what AI is finding because it's just going to be able to provide more accurate, faster, and better results just more quickly. I mean, it's going to be a boon for research. Like, it's just going to be really helpful for pulling more accurate results. Now, it's not fully accurate, even with perplexity. It's conf- It can be confidently wrong uh, at times. So ChatGPT, like perplexity, can be just as wrong. Like, for example, I did a search on how much it would cost in general to reupholster a car right? All the chairs and the covers and the ceiling and all that kind of stuff as I've been in the used car market and dealing with that. Um, And it gave me some very confident estimates back. But then I went and did a search result and found that it was actually pulling from furniture (laughs) reupholster price estimates, which are very off. It was like three to five times more expensive to reupholster a car than it was to reupholster furniture, which makes a lot of sense. A car incorporates a lot more stuff and is more particular than furniture <laughs> reupholstery, right? Because a car has to be able to stand up against heat better, has to deal with different conditions. It definitely gets used and abused a little bit more than furniture because furniture is easier to swap out, right? And is generally more than furniture. So 
but it was confident that car upholstery cost, you know, like a thousand or two thousand dollars, and really it costs like five, six, seven thousand. It's way off. <laughs> so, but it was confidently wrong, and so you still have to be aware of that. But it's getting more accurate now that it's able to pull from fresh information and digest the information and give it back to you right there. So that is super helpful for our work being happening with AI and for our research being done with AI. But what does this mean for SEO? A few considerations, like I've mentioned already. It's pulling more from aggregators more than from direct results. So if you're hoping to get a boost of traffic coming from AI, just know that your product pages aren't going to be useful. If your homepage is ranking number one for a great keyword term, that's great for people searching in traditional results or going straight to your homepage, optimized for sales, but AI is going to be skipping over that. So if I do a search for something like best X tools, if your homepage ranks for that, it's not going to be referencing your homepage. It's going to skip over your homepage and is now going to be referencing the blog underneath it, maybe from your competitor that's doing a listicle of best X tools. Here's our favorites. Those are what are winning in AI search. And this isn't the first time I've seen it. I've seen it over and over and over again where it's pulling aggregate results. And this is true even for people who are testing the new beta search feature coming out for uh, the search GPT that's coming out soon. When that comes out, it's the only difference between what I'm seeing between what I've seen from people doing the search with search GPT and what's currently available in chat GPT is that it's just a more robust search. So it has more metadata involved. It has more sources. It has more pictures and different types of media depending on the search that you're doing. But if you want to get a preview of what search GPT is going to be like, just open up chat GPT and ask it to do a search on Bing. Shoot, you've probably already seen it because it's doing this more and more often already. So that's where we're at with search as it relates to AI and chat GPT. And I feel like this is going to be, continue to be a trend, which means the other AI companies are going to be doing, of course, Google's already doing it, but Anthropic is probably going to catch on to this as well because it's just super useful and it makes the search, it makes your AI results better. So be paying attention to this if you're an SEO and be paying attention to this as an AI marketer because it's making better AI results. And we all need to as AI marketers try to make our results as contextually and as contextual as well as relevant as possible in order to automate our processes and get more for less with our time. So to wrap up this episode, thank you so much for listening. If this episode has been just a little helpful to you and giving you a nugget of what's to come and how to get better as an AI marketer, please give this show a rating in Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Just give it the star, tap the stars that you think this episode or this podcast is worth. If you leave a comment, that's even better, but even the stars will help this podcast be found by more people. And if you're just getting started with AI and want to go through a course that will take you from zero to hero when it comes to AI, go to AIDrivenMarketer.com slash course. It is free. It is a five-day video course challenge delivered by email and and that course is customized directly for you. Yes, the content in every single email is customized by AI based on the information that you give it about where you work, how you work, and who you're trying to sell to so that each lesson can be tailored just for you. It's a one-to-one -one thing. I didn't I didn't write any of it. AI comes and customizes it, and you will find out how good it is. And if you want to learn more about it, that's a past episode. It'll be linked in the emails itself as far as how I accomplished it. So take a look at it for a case study, but also how to elevate your AI game. AI marketer.com slash core.